oils, the wonderful world of oils. I just love oils. I think that using oil on your body is such a beautiful way to give yourself some care and give yourself some love. There are two types of oils. The first is living oils. These come from plants and animals. And then the second type is petrochemicals. Petra is Greek for rock. So petrochemicals come from the earth and they are, um, you know, going to be byproducts of petroleum, like the gasoline that we use in our car. Um, petro oils are byproducts of this and it was actually found during the industrial revolution these oil byproducts would be building up on machinery and workers were actually using it for cuts and things like that um, so that's how this was discovered in my humble opinion petrochemical oils are more appropriate for industrial use and i prefer to use plant oils on my body. Um, it's very important to me to be cruelty free, so that's why I choose the plant oils. One reason that I love the living oils, such as the plant oils, is because they are packed with nutrients, which we'll talk about tonight. They can really help you to be an ally to your skin to achieve the goals that you are looking for. Um, oils in general are skin hydrating in that they seal in the water. So oil isn't necessarily infusing water or like hydration into our skin. Um, that needs to be there naturally, but the oil is going to seal it in and prevent what's called transepidermal water loss, which is generally named TUL, T-E-W-L for short. This is basically the evaporation of um, water from your skin, and the oil is just creating a barrier over the surface to prevent that. The reason I'm specifically talking about this with Color Up, and you will see that there is oil present in every single one of our products because CBD is a fat soluble ingredient and carrier oils are going to boost the availability both topically and internally. There is a couple of exceptions here with some of our products, which are our sanitized products. You'll see that there are not oils in those products, but CBD is also broken down and available to the body very easily in alcohol as well. So that is the exception, and those are the products that we will not cover tonight as they do not contain oils, but are still amazing, beautiful products. So let's start by talking about the comedogenic scale. This is very controversial in our field of aesthetics. The comedogenic scale was originally invented in 1979 by a dermatologist who invented this. They had been using rabbits to test if things would be irritating on people's skin, they used their ears to test this um, since the 50s, but in 1979, um, the actual comedogenic scale was invented where they would apply products to either the backs or right behind rabbit's ears to find out if it would cause either a comedone or a blemish. So, According to the comedogenic scale, zero is non-comedogenic, one is slightly comedogenic, two to three is moderately comedogenic, and four to five is severely comedogenic. Um, this is still used today, and one, I will touch on, of course, the cruelty factor here. Um, the rabbit, you know, maybe it doesn't sound so bad, like they're just getting skincare products put on to see if it's going to cause a breakout on their ear, um, but they actually have to use a cross section of the skin to study that. So unfortunately, the rabbits are killed during this process. Um, so we really want to stay away from giving this scale a lot of credence, in my opinion. But on top of that, it's 
not an exact science and every single person is so dynamic every single person's skin is incredibly dynamic and so i personally do not put a lot of weight into the comedogenic scale because you might find something that's a zero on the scale but it could still break somebody out due to internal and external factors going on with them um, there are several different scales happening all the time and they're constantly competing with each other. They are not creating the same uh, information. It's not consistent across the board. So this is another reason that I don't put a lot of weight into it. Additionally, rabbit ears are more sensitive than human skin. So this is another reason that the comedogenic scale may not be the most reliable. I do find it to be maybe a loose guide. Um, you know, you can look at something that's severely comedogenic and that's probably not something that we want to use on someone who is more prone to acne. So that's my soapbox about the comedogenic scale. Uh, but if we're not using that, what can we use? I actually like looking at the fatty acid profile rather than the comedogenic scale um, and then maybe putting them together and then again it's going to be some trial and error with every single person knowing that not every single person is going to respond in the same way to every product and that's because we are all so dynamic. So fatty acids are the building blocks of oil, and there are many different fatty acids, um, but I like to, for simplicity's sake, look at the two that are generally looked at in skincare as far as if something is acne safe or not. So we look at linoleic acid and oleic acid. Linoleic acid is an omega-6, our body does not naturally produce this. Acneic skin generally has lower levels of linoleic acid and higher levels of oleic. For that reason, if we are working with somebody who is an oily acne skin type, um, you know, maybe they have that thick, stickier sebum, we know that they probably have a higher level of oleic acid. And so when we're looking at the ingredients, we want to find a product that is on the lower scale with oleic acid. Oleic acid is an omega-9, which is naturally produced by the body. It's very thick and very rich. However, not everybody produces enough of this, and that's where we may see somebody with dry skin or mature skin. And in that case, that client would benefit from something, a product that is balanced higher on the oleic acid scale. Now, we can't look at every single ingredient individually. Um, I really like to look at the product as a whole. So we'll look at some of the Color Up products today and we'll see that some of them are higher in oleic acid, but that doesn't 